these days, everyone knows or should know that smoking, vaping, dipping, and snuffing, and yes, I did say vaping, are all terrible for your health. The vapors will say it's not carcinogenic, um, cancer causing, and I'll say remains to be made really clear, but the whole popcorn lung thing is clearly mm -hmm. problematic. Uh, Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Mo and I'm a licensed dentist. Today I'll be critiquing Andrew Huberman and Stacy Whitman claims in relation to nicotine pouches and how it may affect the oral health. Um, but nicotine doesn't cause cancer. It's the delivery mechanism. Mm -hmm. Yes. But these days, a lot of people realizing the cognitive uh, enhancement, if you will, I don't even like the phrase, uh, the stimulant effect of nicotine are using nicotine pouches in particular, gums, um, let's set patches aside for the moment, um, and mints and things of that sort for the stimulant effect. It's an unusual stimulant because it also relaxes one self a little bit at the same time. So it's kind of that, like, you know, that sweet spot. And I confess, I will occasionally take, you know, one or two milligrams, very low dose. Most pouches are anywhere from three to eight mm. pouches, uh, uh, milligrams rather. I'll take, you know, like one to two milligrams of nicotine in the form of a gum. I'll just chew it, you know, and then take it out. Um, nicotine is a vasoconstrictor. What does nicotine do to the oral microbiome? Are you going to make me quit nicotine? I'm, I don't feel addicted, but every addict says that. So, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so he consumes, or rather he uses nicotine, but in the form of chewing gum. They're talking about nicotine in this video, as in nicotine pouches that may be placed in certain areas of your mouth over a period of time, and the potential effects of this, whether of if there are adverse effects or otherwise. The first step is admitting the issue. Um, so I don't want to villainize anything. No, you can villainize it. So I agree with you. I don't think it's the nicotine itself, but like the pouches, for example, are becoming very popular. So what else is in those? Um, and there's a really interesting case study that maybe we can link it for people mm -hmm. to look at sure. and I'll share it with you later. Um, and then I have colleagues who are reporting this all throughout the globe, but they're one brand in particular, it will have mannitol and maltodextrin in it, which mm -hmm. are sugar alcohols and a different a carbohydrate. And they market them as sugar free. Well, Products are allowed to have trace amounts of sugar still in the product, very small amount, and still be called sugar-free. And the issue with these products is the duration of action, the contact time, I and mean, you're supposed to leave them in for 20 to 30 minutes, mm -hmm. am I correct? That's right. So it's quite a long time to have that up in the mucosa, along the bone, and along your teeth that potentially has some sugar in it okay so it's like if you're sucking on a hard candy um but also so just to provide some context why is sugar relevant um, sugar does not directly cause cavity i know this is a shocker to you but how is sugar uh, linked with decay well it's because we have bacteria in our mouth there's that are called predominantly streptococcus mutans is the strain of bacteria that consume the sugars or the trace amount of sugars that she addressed and these bacteria have waste products that are uh, that are acidic and would alter the pH of your mouth and surface of your tooth to become more acidic and enter it into a state that's called the demineralization state where your tooth is uh, surface is becoming softened and more susceptible uh, to caries and that's how the cavity is gradually forming it's from the waste product so if there's any link according to what she's saying it can be in relation to the trace amount of sugars consumed by the bacteria that I mentioned and then we have waste products and an important factor in the formation of uh, caries and the caries progression process is time how long um, are you feeding those bacteria with sugar that they love so they can bring 
this waste product. So we're seeing changes to the, the cellular um, structure up in that area. So you can see leukoplakia, which is like white patching, which can be precancerous. So this is why I just like everyone mm -hmm. to get checked out. And we. So I have uh, come across a lot of studies that are linking smokeless tobacco okay i'm not talking about nicotine pouch smokeless tobacco which is placed in a similar fashion and the prolonged use of this and the use of smokeless tobacco with uh, cancer and uh, changing the oral mucosa into a pre-cancer stage um, so the oral mucosa is like the surface of your mouth from inside um, and she's talking about nicotine pouches that perhaps having a similar effect now i did some uh, research on this I'm not sure if it's very clear or maybe because it's a new uh, product so perhaps there are not that much prominent studies in relation to this if somebody is aware of a study please link in the comment section i would gladly hear it or i would love her to reference perhaps a study or something that clearly states this we are seeing bone loss and gum recession. Um, again, anytime you put anything into the mouth, it's going to change and shift the microbiome. And that could be a filling, that could be a piece of gum, that toothpick. could be a toothpick, anything, you know, arguably besides neutral pH water. Um, and so this case study, this gentleman was going in, I believe he was in his mid fifties. He started using these pouches and and had always had very wonderful dental checkups with x-rays and went in regularly and maybe he missed one appointment. And after 15 months of use, the x-rays are outrageous. He has, has rampant decay along the side where he had the pouch, very likely from potentially that trace amount of sugar, the microbiome. But I'm not sure, I mean, like i don't know is there any other uh, we call them confounds or is there anything that changed in that gentleman who is like in the mid of his 50s did he change anything in his diet in his uh, oral health care routine all of these things are important um they cannot like it's very difficult to single out one thing like uh, the placement uh, of that nicotine pouch and just link it to a multitude of uh, di diseases, you know, like precancerous and cancerous and rampant uh, dental caries. So I would love to see that uh, case study. Uh, and again, remember case studies, they're not uh, of the highest form of uh, evidence. Like it's not a randomized controlled trial or a systematic review. Like this is a case study of, I'm assuming an individual. So take it with a grain of salt. I'm not saying it doesn't mean anything, but again, repeating, take it with a grain of salt. Some changes. I mean, it looked like mothball chunks taken out of his teeth and he lost some teeth. Wow. So this isn't to scare people, but if you're gonna choose to use these, I just say know the risks and make sure you're getting checked regularly at your dentist. Don't just mm -hmm. ghost your dentist. Mm -hmm. um, because if, if they're starting to see cellular change. You heard it there first. Don't ghost us, subscribe, turn in the notification bell on and like.